Welcome to FRC Media News for Thursday, June 27th, 2019. I'm Keith Thibault. Tonight we have quite a mixed bag of material ranging from a trial date that has been set for fall over Mayor Jaso Correa to summer cultural events hoping, ha happening rather in the city, both in the past and coming up here in Fall River. But first, let's check out the news headlines of the week. We bring in Phil Devitt, the digital news editor at the Herald News. Phil, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing fine, Keith. Thank you. How are you? I'm well. Let's get right to it. A lot on our plate this week. Uh, first up, yeah. Mayor Jaisio Correa, uh, his attorney, um, in federal court on Tuesday. And a trial date has been set for his uh, charges, federal charges, of February 24th. It was a, it was a, a short uh, hearing before the judge, but a lot was accomplished. And I guess both sides are ready to move forward in February. Yeah, you know, this has uh, been in the works for a while. There have been several uh, uh, appearances in court, not necessarily by the mayor, but by uh, his attorneys and, and the prosecution, just trying to sort all of this out. Um, as you might remember, um, I think there were six uh, continuances, if not maybe five, mm -hmm. uh, on the matter as uh, attorneys sorted through uh, thousands of pages of, of documents. But uh, it was looking like a sure thing. We sent our reporter up to uh, Boston earlier this week, and sure enough, we have a trial date of February 24th, uh, 2020. Um, as you said, Keith, uh, this was uh, over and done with in a matter of moments. The mayor was not present in the Boston courthouse for this. Um, but uh, it, it, if, you're, if you're trying to get a sense of what this trial might look like, uh, Kevin Reddington, a uh, well-known defense attorney and, and the mayor's uh, defense attorney in this matter, says he anticipates uh, a trial lasts about three weeks uh, in Boston. Uh, and we also asked uh, uh, Mr. Reddington, um, after the mayor made headlines last week for taking out nomination papers for a new term, how can the mayor uh, run for re-election and, and deal with a, a looming uh, criminal trial at the same time and uh, Kevin said the mayor is ready he's strong he actually called uh, Mayor Correa the robo mayor mm -hmm. because he just keeps going and going right and there was also a report um, Joe Goods report that um, the federal attorney uh, Mr. Lelling has said right along that this is still an ongoing investigation and I believe uh, Joe referenced in her article that there have been people in the city that continue to be contacted by federal authorities investigating uh, this and maybe other matters that maybe uh, the mayor may be facing. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's, uh, you could boil it down to its simplest terms. Lelling uh, said at the beginning that this was an open investigation, and he has given no indication otherwise that uh, that has changed. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it is uh, what we would call an, an open and active investigation, even though we, we haven't heard uh, anything new for a little while. Um, and we might not at the end of it all, but right. um, that doesn't mean that uh, it's, it's not still being looked into. Right. All right. So moving, there could be more to come. Okay. Moving on. Um, very uh, disturbing story uh, today. A former police officer has been indicted uh, in Superior Court on uh, charges uh, of assault and uh, violating civil rights on four victims, uh, which uh, he dealt with in his official capacity as an officer. Bristol County Grand Jury today handed up the indictment against Officer Michael Pessoa. Uh, do you have any specific details about this? I believe as we're, as we're uh, um, on the air here recording this, uh, he may be before the judge as we speak. Yeah, you know, we, we, by the time this airs, more information will uh, probably be out there, but we're anticipating uh, that Officer Pessoa will uh, go before a judge for his arraignment um, mid-afternoon on Thursday. This after the indictments uh, were uh, handed up uh, earlier today. Um, he is looking at more than a dozen uh, criminal charges uh, for uh, alleged assault and, and violating civil rights of victims um, between uh, 2014 and, and 2019. Um, we've you know, been following this story for a little while, and uh, back in, uh, I think it was last month, the Fall River Police Department announced that uh, Pessoa was on paid administrative leave. There were questions today as to whether that was still the case, given the indictment. Um, we heard from the police department today 
and they tell us that he has now been suspended without pay uh, mm -hmm. pending the outcome of the case. Uh, so that's the latest from the Fall River Police Department on the matter. This is certainly, um, uh, you know, uh, these are serious charges um, uh, stemming from uh, incidents uh, that, according to the police reports that we've read and uh, testimony, um, or not, not necessarily testimony, but, uh, the, you know, the, the um, sort of uh, accounts of uh, alleged victims, um, these were pretty uh, graphic uh, scenarios. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah. Uh, Officer Pessoa has been with the force for 17 years, and the incidents in question first occurred in 2014, then a second incident in 2018, and two uh, this year, 2019. So uh, this will be something, you know, that will be uh, followed. And it's always, um, you, know, a, you know, sometimes these end up being a stain on the entire department, and we don't want to go there, obviously. This is one officer that is facing these very very serious charges. Elsewhere, in terms of Fall River Police this week, uh, Phil, uh, police earlier this week um, issued a statement seeking a help in identifying a potential stabbing um, in Fall River. There was a video that was recorded that was supposed to be in relation to the stabbing that police released. Um, and then there was talk about on this video there may have been some gunshots. And then we find out later on this week that uh, Police are still looking for information on that potential stabbing, but what was heard as gunshots was actually something that was edited into a social media video. What can you tell us about this? Yeah, this is a, a rather bizarre story as far as bizarre stories go. Um, it started out, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, like any, uh, any uh, crime story you'd expect. Police received a report of a possible stabbing uh, in the area of uh, Rock and uh, Locust Streets, I believe. Mm -hmm. This goes back to June 15th. Right. Uh, so they begin their investigation, but don't really get anywhere with it until earlier this week when this video pops up online. And it's, it's, it's home surveillance video uh, from a person who lives in the neighborhood. And it shows uh, indications of what might be an altercation. Sort of there's, there's people running around, um, you know, sort of on a mission. Um, there's some activity with the vehicle, the vehicle leaving the scene, um, but uh, there were also gunshots heard on this video. Um, it turns out uh, that those gunshots were uh, put into the video by the, the, the person who posted it, and um, the department, after speaking with that individual, said uh, it was clear that this person wanted to embellish the inc incident just to create some social media attention. Mm -hmm. um, the department also went on to say it doesn't condone this kind of behavior, obviously, and it encourages people not only to not doctor footage like this, but to report incidents to the police department uh, directly. Um, that wasn't the case with this video. This video was just you know, put online. There was no direct contact with the police department to say, hey, we have something that might be able to help you in your investigation. Um, and then to make this even more bizarre, police say that they're you know, still investigating, but that there is no evidence at this time that uh, this alleged stabbing occurred. Mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely no evidence of a shooting, uh, now that we have the other information, uh, nor did any witnesses call to uh, report one. So this is uh, it's pretty ambiguous as to what happened here, yeah. but police are still looking for information. If anybody has it, they're asking you to call the department. Yeah, very interesting, very uh, interesting how people... Uh, looking for attention on social media. Now, there's no, there's no uh, indication that uh, the person who posted the video will be uh, charged in any way in terms of providing false information. It's just something that was posted on social media, and then it was just shared with the understanding that this could lead, have been, you know, instrumental in that stabbing. So nothing really official here, is there? Uh, no, not that we've heard. Um, at, at this time, it, it, it seems like, um, you know, you, you, could, you could read into this and, and imagine that uh, police uh, gave a, a stern talking to, mm -hmm. to this individual. Right. Um, but no charges have been filed at this time. All right. On a story that we've been following for, uh, for quite some time, became official today. The uh, boards of directors of the Bristol County and South Coast Chambers of Commerce have agreed to integrate under a single corporate of, uh, umbrella effective January 1st of 2020. And Phil, there had been talk, there was a, 
a, a, a group uh, formed between the, the two uh, organizations to examine this possibility of, of integration of services. And it looks like it's going to happen uh, officially in January with a lot of details still to come. A lot of details still to come. There's, uh, you know, there's uh, still a lot on the table that has to be worked out. Um, but there had been talk of this happening as uh, early as late last year, if not earlier. Uh, and then it looked a little more definite in May. I believe we even talked about it here on this program uh, right. back then. And as of today, it's uh, a done deal. Um, and as you said, effective January 1st. Um, the, this deal comes with some stipulations, of course. It's uh, included in that are that the individual chambers in Fall River and New Bedford will maintain their own offices. Uh, there's not going to be a reduction in staff. Mm -hmm. uh, people will be able to remain where they are. Uh, they're looking at this, in, in their words, it's impact over efficiency. So uh, they're looking for ways to um, kind of help the business community in what we now refer to as South Coast rather than individual cities. Um, you know, there's uh, one thing they told these chambers told us a couple of months ago is that Fall River and New Bedford are moving steadily closer together. Mm -hmm. They have some similar needs. They have similar ambitions. So the chambers figure, why not work together to um, you know make some uh, make some moves. Um, we spoke with the heads of both chambers today. They they visited us here at the newspaper. And, um, you know, they told us that this is a coming together of equals. Uh, it's going to be a co-CEO um, type of leadership situation. And they were careful not to use the word merger. They said, you know, that merger has connotations to it as though, you know, one is being dissolved into the other. They say, you know, we're, we're going to retain our individual powers and identities. We're just going to formalize uh, a relationship of uh, unification and working more closely together. Right. So it remains to be seen what that means for the region and the business community, but the, the chambers are looking at this as a very positive step. Right. There are a lot of um, national nonprofit member organizations, trade organizations that have like sort of a, an umbrella organization but have uh, regional or chapter affiliations where those individual chapters run independently, but then again they're affiliated with this broader umbrella organization and that's what looks like is going to be going to be happening here all right phil what's coming up over the next few days oh boy so we're um we're, we're cooking today it feels like there's a lot happening today of course we always have our eyes on the future as well um earlier this week we got to step inside of maple croft lizzie borden's uh, uh, second and, well, her, her final home where she passed away in 1927. Uh, this house is still not open to the public, uh, but we get to go inside with a, a group of folks earlier this week, and uh, some surprising stories came out of that. Uh, we have a story online, and it'll be in print this weekend. Right, sounds good. All right, Phil, we'll uh, talk again next week. Take care. Sounds good, Keith. We'll have more FRC Media News after this. Here are some job descriptions on the latest hot jobs list from the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center. Teacher, Fall River Deaconess Home, located at 603 Rock Street, is in need of a full-time teacher with moderate special needs certification to provide direct classroom instruction to students according to their individualized educational program. Job number 12290163. Medical Assistant, Star, located at 386 Stanley Street, is looking for a full-time bilingual medical assistant to assist in the maintenance of patient flow, taking vital signs, medication review, and assist physicians with exams. Job number 12282686. Welder, Taco Incorporated, located at 583 Bedford Street, is looking for a full-time welder to perform a variety of routine duties in welding items to be used in the assembly of company products. Job number 12292821. The Fall River Public School Department, located at 417 Rock Street, is looking to fulfill the following full and part-time positions at Durfee High School. Art teacher, job number 12290379. School adjustment counselor, job number 12290371. St. Luke's Health System, located at 300 Hanover Street, is also looking to fulfill the following full and part-time positions. Safety sitter, job number 12286357. 
registered nurse, job number 122-86360. For more information on these or other positions, visit masshirejobquest.detma.org or call the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center at 508-730-5000. Welcome back. A family-oriented bike festival is scheduled to be held this Saturday. The free event kicks off at 12.30 p.m., weather permitting. As part of the Krikoshan River Festival, we will be doing a helmet giveaway, helmet fitting, over at on Martine Street, directly across from the UMass building. Uh, there's a big parking lot there and there's a sign identifying it as parking for the Quickashan Rail Trail. And we will be there with our helmet. Uh, we'll be decorating bikes because the children will be invited and their parents to join us in a bicycle parade from the UMass building down right here to Britland Park uh, to join in the festival and to join the uh, South Coast Brass Band will lead that parade into the park. So it's going to be very exciting. The Alfred J. Lima Quickishan River Rail Trail is a wonderful place for parents to bring their young children to learn how to ride. You're away from traffic. It's all safe and uh, secure. Uh, but also, it's great for all kinds of uh, people to use the trail. It's a shortcut. It gets, you know, from this part of town all the way over to the South Wachapa Pond over by Ma UMass and uh, a wonderful ride about two and a half miles each way so a lot of fun and lots to see beautiful wildlife ducks and geese and swans and uh, turtles lots of turtles so well, everyone enjoys being on the trail also this weekend at Fall Rivers Heritage State Park, the public is invited to attend a free outdoor concert. Here's more. Coming up this Saturday, we have St. Anne's Credit Union 25th anniversary uh, summer concert here at the park. It's gonna be featuring the Sugar Babies, which is a group from the Berkeley School of Music. And it's going to start at four o'clock with an opening band. We're also gonna have a lot of family activities. So good things for families with children. So there'll be a balloon artist, there'll be a caricature artist. Uh, we have fun things like glitter tattoos, and then there'll also be games with prizes. So we invite everyone to come down and join us at the park. It's family friendly and it's completely free. Again, the events will start at four and go till about 7.30 on Saturday. Pets on leash are welcome, again, for everyone's safety, both of children, adults, and the dogs themselves. Last weekend, the Fall River Fire Museum held a fundraiser at the fire department headquarters in the industrial park. Let's take a look back. The reason for this event is not only to help the fire museum, but it's, it's more of an awareness to give back to the community because it's free of charge and they can come in here and enjoy the venue. If they want to spend a few dollars on the concessions, that's up to them. That, that's really the reason for it. We want to give back to the community in a way that's educational and just, you know, for the kids, it's great for the kids as well. We have a fire safe house on the end, which uh, teaches kids how to uh, respond if the house is on fire. It's a little simulated thing. We have that, we have a bouncy house, we have concessions, we have antique and modern day fire apparatus on display that the people can look at. We have a wood carver over here, uh, he comes every year and he's, he's carving out a secret until the end, we don't know what it is. And then at one o'clock we usually cut a car down the end, rescue one comes with the jaws of life. We have a couple of people in the car right now, the mannequins, and uh, they'll show us that demonstration, which is again, it's good for the public to see what our capabilities are as a department. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Thank you for considering a homeless pet today. I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. And as always, please feel free to contact the shelter before coming down to make sure that the pets you're viewing are still available for adoption. We can be reached at 508-677-9154. Today we have Pumpkin Spice. She is a five-year-old long-haired chihuahua. She did come in as a stray. She does do good with other dogs, um, but because of her size, she's only three pounds, so she does get nervous at first. 
she would probably do better in a quieter home um, and maybe with older kids. Um, she's very fragile. She is a perfect lap dog. She's very content just being held and crawling up on your shoulder. If you want to come down and eat pumpkin spice at Forever Paws, we are located at 300 Linwood Street, Florida, Massachusetts. Today we have Laszlo. Laszlo here, he's a, he's a three-year-old uh, domestic short hair. Um, he's a very laid-back little uh, man. Actually, he's a fairly big man. Like I said, he's very laid-back. He kind of picks a spot. He kind of um, just uh, spends most of his day napping. Though I think once he got into a home, uh, when you know, if you were if you were the kind of person who you have a long day, you just like to sort of sit down, watch a little TV, relax. He would be the kind of cat that would come over and snuggle next to you once once he got used to you. As far as other animals, he's okay with other cats. Um, dogs can be hit or miss, um, but other cats certainly. As far as what kind of home he would do best in, um, it's, it's a pretty broad range. Um, the only possibility that I could think of that he might not be good with was really noisy homes. Um, and even then, I think he would come to get, to, to get used to it over time. Come on down to 300 Linwood Street in Fall River, Massachusetts at Forever Paws Animal Shelter. A children's concert series kicked off today at the Fall River Public Library on North Main Street. Here's the rundown. Hey, where's the music? I'm here for the concert. Well, you're here, but just a little bit early. The kickoff for our family summer concert series, sponsored by the Fall River Women's Union, will be this coming Thursday at 11 o'clock on the library's front lawn. And then it will be proceeding each Wednesday for the following three weeks afterwards at 11 o'clock. And those dates will be Wednesday, July 10th, Wednesday, July 17th, and Wednesday, July 24th. So bring a blanket, a picnic lunch, and enjoy all the music and other fun stuff that will be happening here at the Fall River Public Library. That'll do it for this edition of FRC Media News. You can watch FRC Media News Thursdays and Fridays at 6 p.m., and check out all our news online at frcmedianews.org. For all of us here at FRC Media News, I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Thursday.